Hello and welcome to this video series on Composer. Now in this video we're going to dive right into using some of the basic tools of Composer to create a single page website. Uh, some might call it a sales page or a mini site but in either case so by using the tools needed to create this single page website you'll learn the fundamentals of being able to create a, an, an entire website on your own with multiple pages with links and um, images and text different formatting and such so we're gonna go ahead and start with creating a multi column multi row layout so without further ado let's go ahead and get into our software now before we open up our composer software I want to point out a little something in regards to organization what I've done here is I went ahead and created a folder named it HTML goodies of course you can name yours whatever you want but if you're gonna follow along in this video series I'd suggest you go ahead and create a new folder to keep all of your images and your index page and all the other web pages you're gonna be creating in so far as this particular video series is concerned now I'm using Windows XP as far as my operating system so to do this I just simply right click on my desktop go to new and then left click on folder and then give it a name and after having done so get rid of this here then I open up that folder double click let me bring this in here and then inside of here I right click basically repeating the process come down here to new left click on folder and then give it a name images now inside my particular folder of images I'm starting off with two images one for a footer and one for a header now the way I've got it set up here it does not give you the JPG or the extension of the file names and there's a way that we can show you how to do that where it does show or doesn't show but that's a little beyond the scope of this video anyway but as you can see though it's a JPEG file so with these images in here and any additional images that I use which frankly I won't be but if I did then I would also put them into this folder and refer to them in the web pages refer to them via the image folder on the web pages so let's go ahead and close this guy out and now then let's open up our software and kind of going along the same train of thought as the organization theme let's go ahead and name our page uh, if you may have noticed too I've already gotten rid of the site manager area to increase the composition page here so we got a larger workspace to work with but let's go ahead and give our uh, page a name and we can do that a couple of ways but the one we're going to do it here is through our source code down here we've got these four tabs as we went over in a prior video let's cl left click on source code come in here and between the opening and closing title tags we'll type in our name and then we'll go ahead and come up here to save I'm sorry to file so that we can save this and <laughs> we go to save as and it's already in our HTML goodies folder so if it's, if not then just use this drop down arrow and navigate your way to the folder you just created earlier and as far as the file name again this is my page name my first web page but as far as the file name I'm going to name it index because that's what the browsers look for to determine what's going to be the first page of this multi-page website and index is the main one of course default.htm or html could also work as well but you know for the most part we're going to go with index just like 99 percent of everybody else would so we go to go there and I don't put the extension here because as you can see here it's save as type html files it will automatically do that for me go ahead and save and now you can see here our name is here and it's also up here as it would appear on the browser title bar as well now then what I want to do here is we're going to have uh, multiple rows we're gonna have a row for the header a row uh, below that for the content and a row below that for the footer and in the content section we're gonna have a column over to the far left for the like a navigation bar of sorts or uh, you know, basically I would rather you and, and most people wouldn't be doing it that way in a typical sales page or single page website they would have it set up just as I mentioned multi rows header content footer but I would rather you know how to uh, 
uh, add additional columns and put uh, text in there, shade it differently from the other uh, parts of the page, uh, put a border up on one side of that column rather than around just the entire thing. Uh, I would rather you have that information and not need it than to need that information and not have it down the line. So that being said, let's go ahead and create a container, a table that will contain all these rows and columns and such. And we can do that a couple of ways, again, but the main way, it being my video, this is how I'm going to do it. We can go up here and click on table and boom, right off the bat, it brings this guy up with the default of four cells. We only want one and we can double click inside of here or right click and go to table cell properties and we want to go to the table section because it's got the two tabs one for table one for cell and in this case we're going to deal with the table properties one row one column all that's fine and dandy and here it's in pixels and that's the way we want it because in default whenever you open this up straight out of the box uh, without having done any changes to the properties as we did in the prior videos then it's going to show a hundred percent of the window and we don't want that we want it to be uh, limited because 100 percent of the window well, there's no defining in this area what the size of the window is going to be because that is determined by the resolution or the size of the monitor of the visitor to your website if they've got a humongous 28 you know inch monitor then you know the window size could be uh, 3,000 pixels wide and if your web page was typically built with an 800 pixel wide uh, mindset, then instead of having a nice, say for example, a nice three line paragraph, it's going to be one long line. Yeah. So it, if you leave this as a percentage, then you are turning over control of your web page look to the uh, resolution of the monitor of the person that's checking out your web page you don't want to do that you main control maintain control so we're going to go with uh, pixels yes but not a hundred that's kind of dinky as you just saw we're gonna go with something about the same width as the header images that I've got the header images that I've got if you noticed earlier they were 780 781 pixels wide so we're gonna go with a nice rounder number of 780 pixels it'll squeeze in that extra pixel without any hassle border yeah you can or no you don't have to we can in fact deal with this at a later date when we get into the cascading style sheets uh, but for the time being I am going to have a three pixel wide border no spacing and no padding what the spacing does is it puts a buffer between the inside of this and the outside of additional tables or cells that you would add inside of our container we don't want that it will kind of dorky um, it'll put a space for example between the header images left and right top and bottom uh, and the cell that it is contained in so we don't want that uh, same with the padding similar concept one of the padding deals with the inside of a cell the spacing deals with the outside of the cell table alignment we're gonna go ahead and put that in the center background color right now the way that it's set up is that it's transparent so whatever the page color uh, it will bleed through into the table color the interior of the table we may not want that actually I don't want that because let's say we want the page to be a dark blue and uh, if you've got black text inside of your table well that's going to look kind of crappy because it's really tough to read dark on dark so let's go ahead and make the background color of our container let's make it white shall we click on OK as you can see here it shows you the color white and under advanced edit we'll get into this in a little bit but right now this tells us the HTML attributes that we have cell spacing none cell padding none border three that just means it's three pixels wide so that'll be okay and we're pretty much well heck it took this back to left we want center okay click on okay and let me just expand this out here as you can see that's the end but I'm working within the constraints of the video so I have to have this little slider bar down here but anyway now that inside of here we want to put our tables or cells data cells we take a look at the source code for the time being we can kind of see where we are right now right now we have 
the title, the opening head, opening, I'm sorry, that's the closing head tag, and up here is the opening head tag. We have the uh, opening HTML tag, closing HTML tag, uh, opening body tag, closing body tag, and in between the opening and closing body tag is where we have what we've just done, the uh, tables and such. And a couple of the attributes here, each one of these is an attribute. The background color, uh, white, the width, the, the size, you know, of the, the definition of the width, the cell padding, cell spacing, all of these are attributes that define more in detail uh, that particular element, in this case the table. You can do the same thing with some minor restrictions for the divider or the table data section or cells. Uh, to where you can define in here using these attributes or similar attributes the color of that particular cell, the border, if any, of that cell, where that border lies, left, right, top, you know, bottom, uh, all around, uh, the type of border, and so on. And that's what we're going to get into uh, now. So let's go back to our normal view. And let's go ahead and inside of here, double click, and actually I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the cells this way. Go up here to insert, go to table, and we want one for the header, one for the footer, and one in the middle for the content. And we want another row uh, to the right, or column rather, so that we can have the navigation bar on the far left, and then the rest of this would be the content section here. So let's go ahead and put in six cells, just we've got marked here. And for one, if you don't understand what the heck I'm doing, don't sweat it, just follow the bouncing ball, so to speak. Now then here, uh, the blinking cursor right in there, hold your left mouse button down there and drag it diagonally to the lower right corner. As you can see, it highlights all six of these. And in any of these, just right click, come on down to Table Cell Properties, come over here to the Table tab, and we want to change the width to percentage now. That way, because we've already got our container, uh, the in, the outer table, if you will, but we want the stuff that's inside of here to be 100% of that. We don't want it to be just in one little bitty dinky corner like this. We want it to expand out uh, based on the parameters we gave to our, our container. Now here, uh, like with the outer container, we can define the border, the spacing, and the padding. And the border here, we do not want one. We'll put that in later. Spacing, nor the padding. The table alignment, again, we'll do the center. Background color, we can let that bleed through because we've already established this to be white. So if we change the color of our page, then the table and contents of that table will be uh, as we defined in the table attributes or the table properties again white so we'll go ahead and click on OK here as you can see it's spread it out just as we want it now what we want to do is we do not want to have our header or our footer image split in half just as these two tables uh, say it will be so we want to combine these two tables the top two tables and the bottom two tables so that they are one and then this middle content section will remain divided in, into two pieces. Then we're going to decrease this one down and uh, leave the one on the right hand side to contain our content. Uh, the one on the left is going to be our navigation bar. So we will continue this segment on creating multi-row and column layouts as well as adding data tables in video 6. So go ahead and take a short break or just press play on video 6 to finish up our data tables, header, and footer sections of our web page template.